Hey everybody, how's it going? Ascendance Podcast here, here to kick butt, take names with a bunch of independent artists. We got Mukani here. Uh, Mukani runs an amazing website that we want to let you guys know about, uh, along with a bunch of other stuff. And we want to make sure to get you the info you need in this awesome interview. How's it going, man? It's going great. It's going great. It's going great. Thank y'all. Like, I ain't gonna lie to you. Like, uh, I came across Raven actually on TikTok. And I was like, man, this is some dope stuff, like what y'all doing. So I had to reach out. I had to reach out. Raven is incredible, man. She's such a cool person. Like, I, I appreciate that, too. You know what I mean? She really is. She's really dope. That's a hidden gem in the community right there. <laughs> All day, every day. So I'm going to start off with some icebreaker questions. Okay. Just easy stuff, you know, make sure. We, we got that casual vibe going. Favorite color. What's your favorite color, man? Black. Hey, good color. Black. <laughs> favorite animal um i want to say I, I, I like tigers but Hell yeah. favorite animal um for some reason i love things in the ocean like because the, the way they flow in the current and stuff some some type of fish most <laughs> likely probably yeah like fair enough yeah, dolphins are pretty cool. I ain't gonna lie to you. They're pretty cool. I've never seen one. I gotta tell you, the ocean scares the hell out of me. That's just like no, I can't swim, thing. but I'll <laughs> tell you, like, whenever we we you know cut on like Discovery Channel and watch, like, you know, think some about water calms me. So yeah, gotta I be definitely in the water. Um, I was going to ask you, uh, we kind of talked about it before this interview, but I see the Hey Arnold stuff behind you. Got anything to say about that? Oh, yeah. So these actually are paintings from, uh, her name is Kiki Daniels. But if you actually ah. go to Mutani and go to Kiki, one of the artists on there, she actually made these. Um, she donated them to uh, when we had a radio station. So uh, hey. Mutani actually comes from a radio station I used to own called the kickback. So these was actually in the radio station. That's super dope. Uh, I, I, oh, it, was it independent music or was it kind of a good mix? Yeah, actually kickback? it was um, real quick. It was a um, independent radio station. We had our own app and while people listened to un, uh, music, it was just straight independent artists. So you was having independent artists. I had 32 to, it was 32 shows all podcast or people from the streets all different you know across the globe and while people listen to music and shows they was actually able to shop from small black business from across the world so we basically was um you now you walk in the mall and you gotta hear music yeah it was the music while you shopped online <laughs> yo that's kind of dope yeah that i like that no uh if, if that tells me anything that tells me that you've been doing this for a while with independent artists and mm -hmm. you have a bit of experience which is always good when it comes to stuff like what we're going to talk about today okay cool thank you i mean i'm interested in really being on the other side of uh, <laughs> the microphone well hell yeah all right so i was going through uh we got mukani and Mukani on your website, it says it's the mix of the word music and icon in Swahili, right? Yes. That's super dope. Um, uh, it also said the name Mukani inspires empowerment, discretion, and purposefulness, right? Mm -hmm. So what do the terms empowerment, discretion, and purposefulness uh, mean to you? Like, uh, you know, what? how are you using those in that context? So straight power, to be quite honest. Independent artists don't I'll be honest with you, they they actually are the, the engine behind music industry, the music industry. So they get paid double to release a single rather than an album because it costs so much to record an album. They they lose power because they are, artists will have to pay to go to a, um, what you call it, a um, open mic night. You know, they, like they literally lose power. So what I decided to do with Mukani is give that power back. I feel like it was just very disrespectful for a lot of people to have to, how can I put it? Let me reverse that back. Somebody that paints or somebody that does any type of trade, they will respect that. And music is everywhere. Mm -hmm. You can't go into a mall and be quiet. You can't. <laughs> 
You can't drive a car for too long and it be quiet. You can't go to a gym and it be quiet. Music has so much power. And so what I realized is that, yeah, it's cool because you'll see all these major different artists that are coming out, but understand they don't really have power. They don't really have power. They don't have, they don't have creative control. And so creative control is the main power that we give in Mukani. So we give artists the ability to control their narrative. We have the ability to control the creativity, the power to uh, inspire. You can basically do what you want with your music. That's the power. Mm -hmm. You talk about discretion. You don't have, when you go to CD Baby, Distro Kid, they go to everywhere. I see what you're saying. Like, I, I definitely respect that. You can that actually too. have it to where, hey, I just want to release something. You know, I don't want to put it on any type of platform and worry about streams. I want to just release it for my fans only. Mm -hmm. and I ain't talking about only fans, but I'm just saying, like, I can put it in my music player. And if you go to my EPK and hear it, you hear it. It's not on YouTube. It's not on Tidal. It's not on anywhere. You're not going to find it, but it's here. Because I'm not caring about the streams. Maybe it's to a point it'll be blocked. Maybe I'm talking about something that they don't really want me to talk about. And then all those other things that um, goes into discretion. You can control who basically. Yeah, you, comes right? and goes. And then um, what was the last one? I, I, I got a long, short window. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. We had um, empowerment, discretion, and purposefulness. Or, okay. Um, music is our therapy. Music also is our escape from the world. Amen. And a lot of times, a lot of artists tend to start making music that mainstream artists are making because it's for the club. It has no purpose. It has no, you know, nothing to it, no originality. They just want to sound like the next person. And so what we do is by empowering them to make that to make revenue and empower them to get their recognition, they can remain independent if they choose to be, but also have, per, you know, like purpose within their music. Speak Absolutely. to understand that people listen to artists before they listen to their pastor. They would, they, artists will determine if they're going to break up with their significant other. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Music will, I do. you know, music will, it's a drug to be quite honest to where it's the only drug you can never overdose on. I hear that. So uh, if people can start making music with a purpose because they're empowered and they only making it for a certain amount of people, I believe deep down inside, we will start having more authenticity in music. We'll have more realness. You don't have to try to fake and be something or it, it can change the dynamics because the people that's listening the people that's listening, you know, and I'm gonna stick, mm -hmm. I'm gonna stick right there. I'm gonna leave that right there. Fair enough. No, uh, I, I, you're what you were saying. It reminds me of a term I always use. It's a uh, the music knows. You know what I mean? And especially when you're saying it's like a drug, it is one of the most addictive things in the world to make something for the people that you want to. So I like, I majorly respect that answer for sure. Like that's really dope. Giving people that platform. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I love it. So I was seeing that uh, you offer that uh, the main charts on your uh, front page. You know what I mean? You have the artist and then based on their. In fact, I have it written down. It was based on the views on their digital EPK uh, electronic press kit for everyone who's wondering. Um, uh, based on song placement, music downloads, merchandise and virtual concert tickets and EPK interactions. Right. So my question is, based on this metric, um, your largest artists who are on Mukani, right? Um, are there any names that you feel deserve more recognition on there that just aren't getting it? Or do you feel that the people are placed where they are because of the work they're putting in, if that makes sense? I'm going with the second one, it's sweat equity. It's sweat equity. Like, I realize, and this might trigger people, and um, a lot of artists get to the point where they feel entitled. You know, and it's like Definitely. to a point where they have so much emotional attachment to the art that they make 
that they feel like it's so dope and people should love it and respect it. It's the same thing as a small business. Just because I went and got a logo on a website doesn't mean people got to support me. I got to put in some work. And for me to give you a tool that all, that gives you your music resume all together, it's not link tree. Mm-hmm. Nobody has to go through any links. It's right in your face. Yo. So whoever visits, a journalist, a playlist curator, a fan, mother, father, whoever can learn about who you are. If you can't drive people to that simply by doing the same thing, because understand those numbers are maybe the same numbers you was getting off Linktree. It's just in your face now. That's it's in your face. It's the, yeah. If you're doing the same thing, that means that everything that you was doing when you had a link tree or a YouTube, you're getting the same views. Man, you got this put together. Like, no, so I feel you. If you're out there in the streets, if you're out there pushing music, you can tell who's pushing music at South by Southwest in Austin. Who got some dirty shoes and who got some shoes that look like they bought $3,000. <laughs> yeah, true that. Because if they got $3,000 shoes, that means they not really walking and networking. So if you telling me you're not sliding in DMs and connecting with your fans, if you can't get them the right organic, authentic, and anonymous comments about who what you are, you ain't really connected to them. You just send them flyers, All right? If you can't get people to hit a button or interact with it, if you can't get someone to buy any type of merchandise from you, you have no fans. You have all these followers, but you have no fans. And so where you're placed is how much work you put in. If you got people buying your stuff, okay then. You got people, you know, you can you can buy streams. Yeah, you can. <laughs> you can buy streams, you can buy followers. You can't buy somebody buying your product. You can't yep. buy somebody downloading your music. That takes up space. You're not finna, you might get somebody put a couple fire emojis on the comment just to be gone, but but it for if you look at the comments, it's organic, authentic. And, and the artists don't even know who put it. Man, I feel that you cannot you know? buy authenticity. You like- can't buy so it a lot of artists may run from Okani because they're afraid of what they might see about their music. They, they, they might see like, whoa, I do not connect with nobody. Like nobody's buying anything from me. Mm-hmm. Nobody's writing a comment. Nobody's viewing. Like I'm looking at my views every day. So you get what you put in. That is, uh, I, I love that you are a person of hard truth. You know what I mean? Because like I, I, everything you said is dead ass right. You know what I mean? Like I mm-hmm. totally feel what you're saying on that. And like, <laughs> as an artist myself, I, I should probably listen to that advice more. You know what I mean? Like, like, cause I think you got a good ass point with that for sure. Yeah. I can definitely respect that. Okay. So my next question comes with, uh, I was, you know, digging around. I saw King Mars was out of Philadelphia. You had a lot of artists out of uh, Dallas, Fort Worth. I think I saw someone from Chicago. We had someone from Cleveland. Mm -hmm. So like kind of a weird question, but what are some of the places you're looking to reach? And what are, did you expect to have such a large reach like you did uh, initially? Yes. Um, I want, I want as many indie artists to, follow those people because one they need a professional electronic press kit amen a lot of people don't even know what an epk is but a lot of artists need a professional image of themselves and leave no disrespect to linktree or any of those smart links mm-hmm. but they're not professional for you they're not professional and you taking that free route you're going to stay in that lane now, I'm not saying people ain't blown up in music and had a link tree on <laughs> YouTube. I'm not saying that. When, yeah. you're, when you're growing, you need people to get everything. The artist that I attach to is the artist that's willing to go forward. And those artists aren't always in, you know, I'm in Dallas. So, of course, I reach a lot of Dallas artists. But absolutely, we, 
I've reached out to every artist that sent music to me when I was a radio station. I I'm playing that. music, you know. So I reach out to you. To you, you see that you ask yourself, are you willing to pay ten dollars to give yourself a better professional image, but also be ranked amongst people within the independent world and actually be able to gain revenue and recognition for your music? without ever trying to sign a deal. I give all those, every single person the same deal, $10 a year, same product. Which is a crazy price for a professional EPK, just for the yeah, record. It's, like it's, it's, and it's digital. Mm -hmm. And you as an artist know an EPK is about three fifty, four hundred dollars $400, right? Yeah, for, they can be crazy. Or a PDF that you gotta, if you drop an album on EP, you gotta do what? Pay another three hundred or four hundred dollars again, right? <laughs> yeah. Because now you that album that num those numbers, all that is stagnant and stuck on that EPK. But here is digital, so everything is growing, and it's a constant. And you can update as many times you want to. Yep. Moving forward with the industry, Mo like, it, and it tech around forward. us. It, it, all you have to do is constantly update it. The same yep. way you updated a, a link tree, you update your EPK. You want people to know you just dropped something, but you don't want to let them know you dropped something and forget about your old music. <laughs> Amen. So, Man, that, yeah. <laughs> you, oh, dude, I love your answers, by the way. Like, you, you definitely seem like you know what's going on. You know what I mean? Like, thank you. I, I can super appreciate that because, like, I'll, I'll get to that later. I'll just tell me like, what it is. Just yeah, no, like, yeah. It, that's that's what i mean like i respect that a ton you know because you get people who beat around the bush like you're you're telling people how it is and like that's that's important in this industry for sure thank you no problem i, I don't want to see i want to see people grow and i want to see people succeed that's what fuels me as a person right yep. i've always been a person that want to see other people be successful because i know that it's in me but when I'm enjoying that life, I want people around me that was grinding with me. Not somebody that I don't know that just came from over here and just see me. You know, I want people to be like, hey, man, we made it. <laughs> right. You know? I 150% I, I feel you on and it, that. And you got to realize this, it's accountability. Like, as an artist, when the last time you got a, a real review about your music? Right. <laughs> Like you think about when's the last time you actually got not a fire emoji, yeah, a real not from a friend or or a family member that you just said check this out. And they just probably oh yeah that's cool, <laughs> yeah. But to get a like a person that like literally a criticism, man. Yeah, I hear that. Back. Am I going the right way? Am I? Let me know. A person can look at this art and be like, yeah, that's cool, that's dope, I like that. But when it comes to music. You tapping into emotions. Do you feel anything? Did you hear what I was talking about? It can be a song that's pouring your heart. I'd be like, yeah, man, that's a club banger. No, it ain't. <laughs> <laughs> be like, no, nah, the bass too low, man. That sounds like nothing. Like, yeah, so yo. it's, 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 I want to reach artists that want to go further with their music, but also be able to just, just compete. Yeah. And, and can take that criticism and be like, move with it. Yeah, no, I hear that. Uh, we, weird side tangent, but like when I was in college, that was something I had a professor uh, for my graphic design tell me is that you need to be able to take criticism. Mm -hmm. And like, I, so I respect you looking out for people like that. You know what I mean? Because like some people just can't take it. And if you're not going to take the criticism, you're probably not going to get very far. Like, yeah, but Mukani is not about criticism. No, of course not. Yeah, I know, but like the criticism is the one thing you need to grow. I think, but that's also the one thing that people can't take when it comes to something that they have emotional attachment to. Of course. Mukani is based around people that it's a community similar to what you have. Like Raven, this she created a community. Amen. Right? Mukani is a community, but it just takes the data. It doesn't take how I feel about you as an artist. It doesn't take if I really want to see you win. It takes data. 
there's people that I am friends with, friends that are artists that do not even make the top 10. I believe that. That uh, I play their music. I love their music. Do not make the top 10. Yep. Because it's about that. And I look at them like, hey, you ain't using my platform. Like, you know, that's a whole nother conversation. No, I, I feel that. I want artists that are serious because I want to put that chart out there and know that you made number one and number two was right there on you. And three was looking at you like, hey, I was coming. I want it like that. I don't want it to be to the point you have one or two people working hard and the rest is just like, you know? So, um, absolutely. Give me I, mean, I, still, I still had that in me. My bad. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, no. I, I love the extra details. I love people who are willing to tell me what's up. You know what I mean? Like that, that's how good interviews go. So I appreciate you on that. I'm going to move on to the next question. So we have, um, should have re uh, I should have pre-read these, my fault. <laughs> uh, based on what you're seeing on your website, right? What is the most effective way of driving those interactions? If you have any tips for people. Oh, okay, that's cool. Uh, connection, uh, creating a fan base. That's one of the biggest things I talk about. So when you slide in DMs, are you just sharing flyers? Or are you saying, hey, how you doing? Uh, is there a way I can have a private listening party? I want to show, share something with you. Or um, being real with, your, with, with, with people you know, uh, building interaction, utilizing EPK, not just for a link in the bio, you can actually sell products, you can have virtual concerts, you can um, actually have small businesses linked to your EPK, to where as people can actually still listen to you and shop from them. Mm -hmm. um, you can bring in your friends, you remember MySpace? Of course. Okay, you remember the top eight? Yeah. So say you have, you're an artist, right? You can have eight other artists that's connected to your EPK to where if anybody come to you, they go to them. So it's building a community around you. So to build and grow, you're looking at utilizing it as a website that you can market for only $10 a year. You're, you're, you you so now it's like driving traffic like through your social medias right mm -hmm. instead of saying click that link in the bio check out my epk that's a big one it's it's like when you share something unlike a you know people would it's so simple when you share something on instagram you know you can have the sticker for more <laughs> click here for more click here yep on your EPK, you can take and hit share to Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, or anywhere else. Just share it and drop it in out <laughs> random, right? Absolutely. You know, it's it gives you a digital business card. So when you own these these different places, drop it. Boom, learn about me. Right? It's networking. The way you grow on Mukani is sweat equity. Things that it doesn't show up on the followers. It doesn't show up on the on the fans. It shows up with just honestly um, using a platform for what it is, which is a one page website that's connected to everybody else that I can connect everyone to me. Mm -hmm. All right. Use it as a place to where I can spend money more on marketing because I have a place to where people can come and get everything. Absolutely. I'm not scrolling, looking at a whole bunch of links. I'm looking at, so I can, I can take a photo shoot, post one picture, say, check out the rest of my EPK. I can show a preview on social media, check out the rest of my EPK, leave a comment of what you think and think about it. Absolutely. Take, turn the comments off on your social media to where they got to do it. You can force people to do so many different things because people love giving their opinion. Amen to that. You know, <laughs> hey, I'm dropping a exclusive song. I'm doing an exclusive song. You can record it on YouTube, make it private, put it on your EPK, have it up there for three days. The fear of missing out. People going to be like, oh, my God, it was so dope. You just see the comment section. Of everybody talking about it. Don't ever post a video. Just posting yep. all the comments of what people are saying. Hey, man, uh, video coming down in the day. 
It's yeah. boosting up your views, boosting up your comments. Hell, it's boosting up your YouTube or whatever. All right? You can have it on YouTube. You can have it private with us. You can have concerts. You can have, you know, hey, I got exclusive T-shirts. That's for my EP coming out. Absolutely. Okay, right? So there's either somebody talking about actually teaching on their EPK. Hmm. That's a really good idea, honestly. Like I, I could see how that pull people in. If you what you play out, you play an instrument. I do. I, I play eight actually. <laughs> but like, <Okay>, so <laughs> if there's somebody that's out there trying to learn it, right? Mm -hmm. Say, hey, look, I, I drop a lesson on my EPK every Thursday. That's super dope. That's kind of that's like some genius shit. You can right? actually have the video there and you can hit a donate button right there. Mm -hmm. You can have it to where people tip you, donate to you. The video goes up, video comes down. That's crazy. Like, that's really cool. And you don't have to ever learn about coding or adding it. It's just all about letting us know ahead of time. Yo. So that's how you build the to stop looking at it like you you just gonna drop something and walk away and all of a sudden the market is gonna come. You still, <laughs> you know, yep. you find a way, but you able to get revenue from it, unlike you would other places and other ways. Yeah, you have that platform now to keep pushing. Yeah, I feel that absolutely. Um, really cool. You brought up MySpace, by the way, like weird side note. I only kept this in my notes. I wasn't actually going to bring it up, but, uh, uh, going through the different artists page, that's gave me that vibe in a way, like where it was just like, this is like a personal snapshot of this person. And like, here's where you can go and check that out. Like, that's really cool. You brought that up. Cause I totally see what you mean with that. Yes, you know sir. what I mean? I think, uh, I think when we was doing MySpace, bro. We was like, we was coding. And we was kind of given our own, basically our own <laughs> space, right? Absolutely. I think that my space influenced me as I was designing these pages. Because I designed the pages and stuff. Mm -hmm. I designed the whole website and I designed each EPK. So whatever you give me is like, kind of like what I spit out digitally. Absolutely. So if you give me really, really good pictures, it's like, all right, cool. If you give me some really hard picture like okay I gotta find a way to just make your best picture and everything else kind of throw to the side mm -hmm. or you know it, it's just being real I look at each of those places as a digital home <laughs> absolutely and they go every time you go in there it's like you learning something new you you're in their space you listen to their music you're reading about their story some people's story is long and in depth some people it's like hey I just started rapping <laughs> right yeah I, I can respect that. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, out of curiosity, uh, uh, do you have a background in uh, web design or did you just kind of pick it up and learn? Like, you know, I picked it up and learned. I have a background Absolutely. in management, um, but I don't have a, I've got that one certification <laughs> when it comes to website design. Hey, that's okay. I mean, <laughs> they, they still look clean. You know what I mean? Like, Thank I ain't you. trying to say anything by that. Like, you know, Hey, fire Absolutely. Bro. <laughs> huh? yeah, yeah you know fire emoji fire emoji <laughs> like, like i got you but like no that's cool like uh, as someone who is a self-taught musician i can respect someone who's willing to go out and learn something you know what i mean like those i think that's the that's the beauty of it all because it feels like um they call it imposter syndrome like am i supposed to be here am i supposed to be doing this and it's like people are like no it's really good and you're like I wonder if I really applied myself and I applied myself, man. And, um, it started off as like, you know, to help me, I'll just do it myself, build my own website. I was like, <laughs> wait a minute, hold on. And the first website was trash compared. And so I said, hold on, wait a minute, let me do this this way. Yep. Oh, all the digital and the, the EPKs, what you see on the social media. I just try to do the best to give that brand image. Absolutely. You know, so it's been a journey to get there. I hear that. Has, Absolutely. Hmm. So actually that does line up with my next question. Look at that. <laughs> All right. So along that journey, what is a vital piece of information that you learned that like 
changed everything you were doing when you were setting up Mukani? That I am ignorant at certain things. I, I hear that. <laughs> when I, I, I learned that the music business is vast. Business is vast. You can't learn everything. And it's like when you're creating something, it's a ship, right? Mm -hmm. You can't be the one, you can't be the chef that feeds everybody. You can't be the person throwing coal. You can't be the navigator. You can't be the, the, uh, 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 whatever i'm yeah yeah, yeah. I, you know, i got you uh, the guy you lowering be, the anchor like yeah you, yeah, have yeah. To, you know what you have to sit back and be like i'm the guy with the map <laughs> now if i need to go cook something i'll go cook it because I, I i it's good to know certain things in business mm -hmm. but you gotta let that chef be that chef and so the most vital information i ever learned when building Mukani is what I've learned from my mistakes. And so I told you about the radio station. He was like, man, that's pretty cool. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. And then you ask yourself, what happened to it? Well, when you try to put on so many hats, you start speaking so many different languages. Mm -hmm. When you start speaking certain different languages, it can cause confusion on where we supposed to be going. Mm -hmm. And so even though it was a great idea, it caused me to be confused with myself where I wanted to go with my career, where I wanted to go with my, with my uh, gifts and different things like that, and how I wanted to help what people like. Mm -hmm. You gotta make it to where you do, you're selling one thing to one group of people. Now others can grab it, but you gotta ask yourself if you start trying to sell so many things, so many. Where are you at right now? Where do you live? Me? Uh, I'm in Virginia. Uh, okay. Roanoke specifically. So if you think of a, y'all have a Raising Cane's or a. Um, yeah, we got a Zaxby's. Zaxby's, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What do they sell? Chicken. <laughs> okay, that's one. How many ways are, it's like what? Uh, a three, three count or a four count, right? Yeah, something like that. I think so. Uh, I think it's four count. Now, compare that when you drive to them, you know, hey, man, I know I'm going to get some chicken tenders, right? Mm hmm Put your mind where you're about to go to Taco Bell. <laughs> All right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, different market, different stuff. Different market, like, what do I want? Like, and you yep. know what happens? Zaspies is like this. Yeah. It's less stress. Less, so I learned to streamline, and I learned to, I can't do everything else. I can't do everything because... When you start bringing on a team of people, because people start to believe in what you're doing. And what happens is we so busy trying to recruit and we're trying to market and we don't realize we got people that believe in what we got going. You just got to learn how to stop trying to be the marketer and let them be the marketer. You got to let them stop. You got to stop trying to be the digital design person, and let them design and understand that people will be 10 times more involved in your business if you allow them to be in it and if they make mistakes they make mistakes because you you're small you have time to make mistakes hell you make mistakes mm -hmm. right so i learned to stop trying to do everything and i learned to basically streamline things so when i explain to my team what we're doing it's not confusing i'd rather be a zaspies and sell chicken than trying to do everything under the sun and be like taco bell not saying Taco Bell bad, but <laughs> yeah, I feel you. That's man, this conversation was destiny. I actually kind of needed to hear that myself. If that makes I sense, feel, you know what I mean? I hear that absolutely. You you have to like even when I said you say you play a lot of instruments. Mm -hmm. Which one are you best at? Uh, saxophone or piano, one of the two. See how you still was kind of hesitant on which one? Yeah. One and ask yourself if you dedicated three months or six months to only that, where would your music career be then? <laughs> yeah, good point. Hopefully, the time it takes <laughs> if you if you think about it, if I'm playing sax right now and I decide to play piano because I want to sharpen that skill, you're taking away that skill sharpening from that sax. 
something is given is given up. But if you just say, you know what, let me be the best damn sax player in the game. And when I when, think of it like this, when I when I burst through the industry and I make it, mm-hmm. then I can show them I'm good on the piano. But let me get through it. Shaq couldn't make not one damn free throw. And he still <laughs> made it to the NBA. Great comparison, actually. Like, you know I, what I'm saying? I, hear, I definitely hear that. Hey, I can't shoot a three and I can't shoot a free throw, but you can't catch me. I mean, in that paint, I'm dominant. <laughs> Crazy and he got him to the league. Mm-hmm. Steph Curry ain't finna dunk on nobody. But he, he can, he shoot, can he hit can a shot. Your, he can shoot from your grandma's house. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can. Know? So sometimes instead of trying to be a jack of all trades, and that's what I had to learn. I had to stop being jack of all trades. Oh. He, well, you know what it caused me to do that? Hmm. We are always in a survival mode when we start something. And we try to do everything and hope that it pops. Mm-hmm. We got to believe in that one thing that we do so good at. We just got to believe it. That if I did this one thing, this is that one thing I really would do and want to do. And I got to believe that if I don't do the other stuff, it's going to work out. You just got to, you got to believe in your own stuff and you got to believe in your own dream. So there be times where I want to do a lot of other stuff. <laughs> and I can be doing consulting or something, you know? Absolutely. No, that, that you're hitting a, the perfect chord for me right now. I ain't going to lie to you, bro. <laughs> like hey, I hear, I hear it's you. It's meant for it. It was meant. Absolutely. Oh man, I, I got to sign up for your site. I think is what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> Ten dollars oh. a year. Amen, man. Okay, so this is my last written question. We can keep going after that because uh, it, it, you know I could go all day if you need to. Um, but are there any future events with Mukani uh, to look forward to? Like, what's some stuff coming up for people? All right, let me drop. Let me drop some gems on you. Education center. Oh, oh. So an education center for members, um, some other stuff I really can't disclose, no but problem there. an education center um, and more of a, uh, you'll see more virtual things through um, bringing back that MTV jams. Mm-hmm. The, you know, you don't really see too much of that. You might see it through on Vivo and things like that, but you know, given that music television. That's or, a coincidence you bring that up, but I'll talk to you later about that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's bringing more of that. It's bringing that education, but it's it's just bringing that extra tools to get these artists out there. Like, I'm not in the marketing. I'm just to the point, Mukani is for, if you think about it, if you was a record label, mm-hmm. I would be your best friend. <laughs> yep. Because you you probably spend money on somebody blowing up on TikTok and you ask yourself, are they even listening to the real song? Mm-hmm. You know, can they sell out a crowd? Can they sell a t-shirt? Are they brandable? Do they know how to present themselves? Are they do they have the mindset to not blow through this money and not put it towards something? Do they have the wrong crowd around them? You can learn all that being a fly on the wall on Mukani. <laughs> it's honestly the indeed, but for music artists. Mm-hmm. And so for me, I just want to provide the tools so artists like yourself can be like, no, I'm serious. Look at what I've got going on. You ain't got to click through any of the links. I'm going to give you one solid link. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna give you one solid link. You go to it, read about me. I might be live, donate to me, buy buy something. I might sell a, a NFT. Yeah, so, you know, I'm just here to provide the tools for you guys so you can show what you're doing. Not everybody's gonna sign a deal, and I don't want everybody to sign a deal. I want you to come in. Grab revenue, grab recognition, but my key to anything I do, keep 100% creative control. Amen to that. Now, you can sign a deal. Hey, look, I, look, 
look what I did over here as an independent. You ain't gonna come over here and tell me to change anything because look what I'm doing over here. Yep. You can give me some money to elevate that, but look what I'm doing over here. Don't change my sound. Don't change my image. I've built a brand. That's what artists are doing. They're building a brand to where everything around them is going to, from businesses to, to people want to learn from them to other, even you. Like, mm-hmm. if a person, hey, man, I want to be on your song. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let me yeah. check out your EPK. Let me check yeah. out what kind of music you do. Let me check out what people are saying because I want to make sure that this connection is worth anything. Because mm-hmm. I can't get that time back. I don't care if I got a home studio. I can't get that time back. That's a. Do you mind if I like like see if what I'm saying is about right for what you're trying to say? Go. So like I've what you're saying is like you can have the music side down that's fine you could be the best musician on earth you're helping people with the business side of that it's yes. like okay here's what you can do now like here's where you, you take that next step that's yes. pretty dope like absolutely it's 20 percent music 80 percent business <laughs> unfortunately the most talented <laughs> people the most talented people are still unsigned Amen. And the most basic artists sometimes, mm-hmm. literally, they just have number money pumped into them. And you got these people, that's an industry plant. Shit, they just knew the business. They didn't even have to know the music. Somebody going to write for them. Yep. You know? Sorry for cussing. I'm just saying like, no, you're get- all up about who's real, who's not. Sometimes it's the fact you cut your... I had people at radio stations. And this mm-hmm. is the reason why I Mukani is so dear to me. When I owned the kickback, I was the owner and I had it. You can, if you really want to see how it looked, go to Mukani, go mm-hmm. to the real, go to the real section, go all the way down. You'll see a yellow K. You will see, all like, right. all right, I leave it up there just so people can see where I'm coming from. To Absolutely. Know my- I would give artists $50 for an interview. An hour interview, similar to what we're doing, but it was in my radio station. One, that's content. Mm -hmm. Two, that's pictures. You have mics that look like this, professional setting. Not a green screen or nothing like, you had couches, you had chairs, you had a DJ area, lights, everything. You had the ultimate mood content place pay fifty dollars for an interview for one hour it's not me talking about other stuff it's only about you okay Mm -hmm. we during the breaks we play joe music only for fifty dollars right why did people come in there not prepared with 300 some people like an entourage high as hell oh you're asking what i mean i can tell you <sighs> so you ask yourself yeah yeah, you yeah. Pay fifty dollars right you pay fifty dollars so you paid your money the station is literally shutting their entire operation down mm-hmm. no other music is playing no advertisements you literally just pay $50 to control an entire station. And it's on an app. So it's everywhere. Yeah. It's not on a re- it's not just on a website or nothing. Yeah. It's on an app. It's the whole kit. The whole yeah, kit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear that. And you come in. And I'm all for putting people on. But this interview is about you. It's not about two to three other people that you talking about doing a project with that mm-hmm. come in with slides. If they didn't come in and take videos of you, this is about you. If you don't come at me and say, what questions are we are we talking about? And you not really an interview person. I'm an interview person. You ain't got to give me the questions. I'm going to go in. Yo. But if you really don't do interviews and this you, you not good with thinking on your feet and knowing what you're going to say, what questions are we talking about? <laughs> right. I want to prepare because I want to make sure that I'm presenting something. So when I was seeing that, it's like, 
dude, you're not ready. Mm-hmm. Like you look, you talk to me, you're like, man, this dude is really answering these questions. But you, how many artists, and you ain't got to think, you really say their name. How many artists have you interviewed and you was like, on the other end, like, yeah, I'm ready for this to be over with. Plenty. <laughs> and I you realize, that. like, your music sounds good, but your business acumen, you're you're not ready for the big, you, you want to blow up so bad, you're not ready. Mm-hmm. You're not ready. Yep. And I'm not saying that every... I'm saying there's levels. There's some people that are ready and we just want, hey, get that recognition. Show them people that you're ready. You set out, you're different. You don't just have artists in your bio. You're different. Mm -hmm. There are some people like, hey, man, no, I I need to learn. Because if I go there, they're going to take advantage of me. Yep. I don't want nobody to get taken advantage of. So if you need to learn the, the, the business side, if you need a entertainment lawyer if you need a real manager and we're not talking about your cousin they just want to manage your money but they don't know how to manage you i just want people to be prepared for their for their greatness because they have the talent they just don't know how to cut all that other stuff out and focus on you as a brand you're an llc did you know that you can literally File yourself as an LLC and everything you do is a tax write-off. I'm going to just put it this way. Uh, Rat King is signed off for a reason. <laughs> you know what I mean? I feel that. Like You got to, if you make yourself a business entity, you can sign off the gas. You can sign mm-hmm. off that, oh, I went to lunch with my, my, my homeboy and we talked about an album release. That's yep. everything, man. Write offs are the crazy. Artists talk about how they got to spend everything, bro. You can literally get a a business account and and make it different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you can take platforms like Mukani, spend ten dollars a year, and market yourself. Use the money that you would have paid for a blogger to pay what one hundred and fifty, two hundred dollars for one post. Mm-hmm. Just to get a couple of fire emojis and stuff, you can take that and actually put towards a, a photo shoot or a music video or a lyric video or visualizer, better equipment, better wardrobe, management, anything. So even though I know my electronic press kits are pretty dope and I know that they're worth way more than $10 a year, I know that. But what I get off of it is the more artists that come in, the more we can build that community. So, you know, you know Ascend This Podcast can be like, hey, we yeah. in the game. Well, and that's our plan too. Let me tell you, <laughs> we've been talking like we about- a, There's a bridge. We can create a bridge. We can create a toll road and literally charge just to travel. Absolutely. You know, but that's what I'm saying. You build that community on top of people, but you say, Hey, look, this is where we're going. This is where we're going. This is what we want to do. And this is how we got to do it. So I know I probably answered your question and I probably didn't. (laughs) I apologize. No, I I got you, but it's just, Hmm. it's not just the business side. I think it's the fact that artists need to open up their eyes and knowing what's in front of them. And that includes their who they are, how they treat their followers, how they treat a fan base, how to gain one, how to perform, how to interview. Because it really is to the point where you're so busy trying to make a new album and EP, but you not you don't even you you don't even have a 90 day release plan. Mm-hmm. You just drop it in two weeks, or you something I'm gonna drop it in two weeks. You ain't said nothing. You not Beyonce. Yep. You're not Beyonce. Releases are much more complicated than Man, look, you ever realize sometimes. And it's like, on what day are you releasing it on? <laughs> right? Yeah, that's it. Man, I've been learning that lesson. <laughs> no, I feel that. But it's like, I don't make people feel like, oh, they ain't know what they're doing. I'm charging you at a low price. I'm putting you in. Go, come get educated. Come get your, your business. Um, re, you know, come get your resume. Come get your EPK. Come get connected. Come 
prove you know you you know where you're at. Come get all that, right? Because I want to mm-hmm. see, bro. I'm not here to sit and tell you what you need and what like. I'm not one of those people. What I'm saying is, put your money and your efforts into the things that's trying to get you out of where you need to be. Mm-hmm. You know, if you spending money on a on a wardrobe and you literally don't even have your stuff properly mixed and mastered, you got a whole problem. I you, <laughs> yeah, you, you don't want to go to a professional studio, but you find a reason to try to, you know, have your you know music spawned by a DJ, you don't even got to approach the DJ. Mm-hmm. You know, hell, you can have the DJ approach you off the EPK. Amen. And download your music right there. That's I, I definitely see that. It like it, this is like something that like this kind of sounds like is someone once told me that they're not there for the people who are going to fail because failure is inevitable in some cases. Mm-hmm. What you're there for is for the people who are willing to succeed and willing to make that drive and effort and push forward. Right. Yes, sir. I feel that like it, you having seen what I have on Mukani, right. Um, I, I can tell that like, what you're saying is being put into practice you know what i mean um i brought his name up earlier just uh briefly but your number one dude right now king mars right looked at the page i saw what he was doing checked his socials and that guy is grinding like actually you know what i mean and mm-hmm. like i respect that you know what i mean and i uh as someone or you mentioned making that bridge with ascendance and i gotta say that like sounds like a lot of really common and dope values that are coming towards the indie community from you. You know what I mean? Like I can majorly respect that for sure. Yes. And you know, what's crazy. Hmm. I was talking to someone today. I said, man, I have a, a dope interview today. They said, who? I said, I said, this. I said, you said, so what did I say? Be honest with you. They're like the Walmart for indie artists. <laughs> God. I said, they have pretty much the, a complete marketplace. Mm-hmm. You know, you want to get playlist or you want to get an interview, all those type of things. And people don't realize how important an interview is because it's it's breaking down your music and who you are as a person to where a lot of people don't get to do that. They so busy trying to force feed. This is what I do with this type of music, but getting a podcast like this, right? Or getting a playlist because they're pushing out, understand it's a race to discovery. Mm-hmm. And once artists realize it is how, and I'm just be real with you. You're good major labels, films, playlists, all these people that make money, right? Mm -hmm. Major money. Their job is to find indie artists, artists at a low price for films. You don't, you don't see a DJ Khaled song in every transition on a movie. Mm-hmm. The music, the music budget is the first thing that's cut when they're cutting budgets. They need artists that they can pay at a lower rate than they would a major artist. So have your music, you know, sync license, but being able to reach out to them with an EPK is so vital, right? Because they get to choose if you have any of the sound because if you just send them one song they're gonna judge off of that one song they send yep. you that ep that ep here's my latest ep they're gonna judge off the ep but if they if you learn i got a top 10 here's my top videos do i have the sound for you i can go in the studio and provide that for you right now but do i have the raw skill set that you're looking for so i can make that deal happen mm-hmm. a record label understand you only can be signed to one record label at a time so they're trying to find the next you know britney spears pharrell Mm. drake Nicki minaj they're trying to find them because once somebody signs you if you decide to sign you can't sign to somebody else yep and if you bring and you become the next music icon here mukani they literally are going to be so, because they think about it. There's music artists, there's music legends, mm-hmm. there's music icons. A Michael Jackson is an icon. 
what was his label he signed to? Because I'm pretty sure they still get royalties off of that. Uh, I I think it was with Universal. If I had to guess, I have whoever to he's with that. is making bank. <laughs> think about it. If he signed to a small indie label, that's what Mukani is for too. Mm-hmm. Small indie labels get because Universal don't really know who we are just yet. Mm-mm. Interscope, Sony, they don't really know. So this is the perfect time for managers, indie labels to be like, hey, uh, let me get first dibs. You know? Absolutely. That's what happened with Megan Thee Stallion and 1501. Nobody knew what 1501 was. Megan Thee Stallion blew up and made a record label 10 times more bigger. And now that record label is now able to bring in way more fresher talent and bigger talent because mm-hmm. they saw what they did with her. Sometimes you just need the opportunity. That's uh, preaching, bro. <laughs> like, like for real. So it's like, we're not here to bash. We're here to put you in the forefront, but give you the tools. You just got to want to accept them. And if you, the, the only entry to get in is $10, right that's more than a chick-fil-a meal you you get a chick-fil-a meal and it's gonna be more than ten dollars hell two gallons of gas is more than ten dollars you know right now it's the fact it's ten dollars a year stretched there by 12 months i that's what i yeah no like it should be a no-brainer for someone investing in what they're trying to do. There are people that literally say, yeah, no, and it's not because they don't understand. They be like, no, well, um, I'm about to do this deal. I said, bro, you don't understand the deal. I don't have to deal with anything. It's the, it's the professionalism. I talked to an A&R two days ago, and I told mm-hmm. him, yeah, you have people signed to your label, but are people really tapped into them as much as you think they are? Grabbing this hmm. EPK necessarily isn't the fact it's taken away from your website or none, but are they really building a fan base? Are they pushing just one EPK? I'm looking at their profile. It's a it's a YouTube link. So mm-hmm. you're doing all this promotion just for one song and hope that it hits. <laughs> or you, this other artist got a link tree. I'm gonna be honest with you. Mm-hmm. I don't like to read. I'm gonna be a per- I'm, I'm just being a person that say, hey, I don't yeah, like- I got you. I love to read. I don't like to read. I see all these links. I ain't gonna go. Yeah, just the list of them. Yep, I know it's exactly like, what you mean. It's like it's it's fatigue. It's it's Taco Bell. Mm-hmm. You know what? Not trying to be funny. You ask for my support. I'm gonna go. But you go to EPK, you see a King Mars. First thing that pop up, a, a, a brother with a beard and a suit. Mm-hmm. Like what the hell going on? <laughs> and what you start doing? It, looking, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, it, oh. I'll, I'll put it this way: what you're talking literally happened. Like I, I looked up King Mars immediately, and like I have his shit saved to my Spotify. Like it, it works. Like yeah. you're 100 percent right. Yep. Yeah. We become everyone's best friend. If you was a playlist curator, you like. Let me see where I really want to play some music. Because you want to tell you what artists do? They send you their EP, their EP or they send you the song they want. That's I'm making a song about going to the gym. You make it, you gave me a song about love. I'm not finna be. I'm not gonna I need to something to that. pump up, you know? Yo. Absolutely. A lot of artists cut their blessings off simply by not having something people can refer to. So an electronic press kit was the ultimate service or the ultimate product it was hmm. the ultimate product it wasn't a music video it wasn't it wasn't a radio station play it wasn't a playlist it wasn't a a blog write-up it was a music resume yep you sounds like you looked for the one factor that made the difference for people and then started pushing it like you know what i mean like that's pretty dope i hear that for sure you know, and I think a lot of people will, especially if, uh, you know, uh, when we're plugging that with uh, Ascendance, because like we got a lot of artists who definitely need some help like that, you know? Yeah. Not not to diss any of them. I, I, mean, I love like, the artists. No, we no, got. like it's not to diss them. It's the fact is that 
y'all are in the business because you want to say you want one artist to say because of y'all i made it mm -hmm. you know that's what happened with youtube youtube was just another platform until a young man named soldier boy had dropped that video with crank that yep. and it caused everybody to go to youtube and it took off from there. And <laughs> this when people said, hold on, wait a minute, I can drop my music here. Then it just started going, oh, I can become an influencer. Or I can share education and stuff. YouTube now has a TV network. That, yeah. You know, and you it actually it had, if you think about it, YouTube, if you watch the Super Bowl, had the most commercials. Really? YouTube TV had the, one of the most commercials. That's crazy. I I actually you know how much a Super Bowl like, commercial is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was YouTube TV. Huh. I didn't know that. That's like that's a dope statistic, honestly. It's it shows you that sometimes it can just take one artist to believe in what you're doing. So with Bukani, Ascendance, it's like I'm giving you these tools. I'm give just believe in the in the product. Mm -hmm. Just believe in the product. And watch what happened. Soldier Boy believed in YouTube. He believed in YouTube. It worked out. It especially worked out for him, man. Like, <laughs> sorry, I'm just, <laughs> I, my brain got caught up. I have ADHD. I was thinking about how it's he just good. dropped that uh, game console. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's all good. But, but, but it's all good. Um, okay. So I have one last question, if that's cool. Uh, okay. Just something Perfect. that kind of, so, you seem like someone who uh, not only uh, wants to help educate people, but is well educated yourself, right? Mm -hmm. What, the, without giving away all your secrets, what are some of the best resources people can go to when they're looking for this type of information? You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. It's so uh, follow me here, real quick, right? I got you. So, it's this thing, like, and it's like in everybody's phone. And, um, it's called social media. Valid. So valid. Social media. Understand there's people like me and there's people like you out there that want to help and educate. Mm -hmm. And we all know that eventually there's going to be a day where we're going to transcend on. So we empty ourselves full of information and we empty ourselves full of tips because we naturally want to see people grow. Mm -hmm. Changing by changing your your thread. Changing your thread and actively using social media as you would Google. That's how I came across y'all. Yeah, no. You know, like, like you think about it, like, ha because if you're in the music business, hashtag the type of things you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So you hashtag music marketing, electronic press kits, music business. You know, yeah. if you want to think of, if you want to make candles, what you going to Google, how to make a candle, right? <laughs> how to make a candle. You have all these different articles, but yep. it's all about how you learn. See, I learned like a, like popcorn. I hear right? that. Give me the information real quick. I don't have time to look at an eight minute YouTube video, but you know what I do with YouTube when I'm getting ready, instead of listening to that music, instead of being, you know, BSing around, cut on a YouTube video mm -hmm. of what you're trying to learn. And allow that to play when you at work you work at eight hours you're like dang I'm here for... but if you can have an airpod in or a headphone in cut on a podcast stay educated is stay what, educated. what you're saying yeah i hear stay that educated. like people don't realize you can educate yourself and learn so much and you can take it in and you'll be able to regurgitate what you understand and as you mm -hmm. keep regurgitating it Understand it's like writing something down. When you talk about it, it starts to become more clear. Absolutely. And when you start basically practicing that, you might not, it might sound weird. You might say it around friends or have a conversation. Like call that friend and just talk music or talk candle making, entrepreneurship, weight loss, sports, mm -hmm. whatever your industry is, you take the time to, follow those people but going on social media looking at bs it's, 
TikTok is a great space to go for it. But you got to learn how to take in what you want to take in. Yeah. You know, like I tell people it's so easy to literally discover and find those things. All you got to do is just check the hashtag or um, you see somebody, you see somebody share something, research that share. Because sharing is, is free, right? But when somebody, share, when somebody shares somebody else's content, they are vouching for them. Yep. So check that vouch. Click it. Research it. Follow or copy that profile. Ooh. Put it in a notebook. Oh, sorry. The, like that, that just clicks specifically. Like you got a good point on that. Yeah. Copy Absolutely. that profile. Put it in a group and say, music marketers know who's vouching for you so you can vouch back you know? yeah like yeah, a like, share is so free but it's all about who's vouching mm. like are you can you share this for me you know that's one way but if they naturally just share it that means they vouch for that and they're letting other people know hey yeah i know i'm selling myself on my platform but you mm -hmm. need to check this person out so that's yeah when they share something if it's a quote an event check that out check out that profile and sometimes it's to the point it's it's like you jumping through bridges to find and you know what will start happening the algorithm will start bringing people to you that you're looking for because it's like what people say manifestation you're manifesting you 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 throwing some in the universe and saying, "Hey, I want to learn this." Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I would tell people. That's how I learn. That's that's awesome. Yeah, no, uh, that was like you've had a lot of enlightening answers today, and like that was just another one to the pile in a way. Like so, you know what I mean? Like hell yeah, you. mad respect. Um, before we go, I know I said that was the last question. Um. Uh, who are some artists that you've been listening to? You know what I mean? We're, we're ascendants. Uh, we're always plugging artists. Like you got anyone? He, um, I got a, I got a whole playlist I'll send you. So um, outside the artists that are tapped in on the pro on the platform, I'm going to just be honest. I'm going to support who support me. So I listen to absolutely Kiki. I listen to King Mars. I listen to NTS stacks. I listen to, Skipper Two Times has a nice vibe for me. Wolfie McNeil mm -hmm. has a nice vibe for me. Um, out, of course, I listen to other people too. Uh, of but course. of course, of course, people. I'm a huge Drake fan. Huge Drake fan. Drake is um, always good. I'm listening, but I love r and I love vibes. Um, it's an artist called Rennie. R I N I. I feel like he's gonna really blow up out there. Recognize that name from something, but yeah, R -I -N -I. Yeah. Uh, there's another guy named Russell. He has this one called Lindsay Freestyle. It's a dope song. Check it out. Definitely. Uh, uh, San Maria. I don't know how to really pronounce her name, but she's pretty dope. Um, Got you. Calvin Kosha has this really dope. Um, Great call out. Yeah. Um, who else? Uh, I can go on and on. I hear that. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm very like yeah. You, we, you listen to music, like uh, I, I hear that. I li listen to music in different forms and styles to where because mm -hmm. I, I I talked about it. So how do we listen to your music? Mm -hmm. Are we listen to it in the gym? We listen in the car? We listen to it with a loved one? Yeah. So it's like I have all those emotions. So um, I listen to them in different styles. So. Absolutely. I'm, ready to, I'm ready to go to work and go quit today. Let me listen to a particular playlist. Mm -hmm. F that job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. I call that my Boss Rush playlist. I yeah, hear that. Yeah. <laughs> I know the exact one. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's that's what I would. Um, and if you have artists, send them um, my way. I want to really listen to their music, you know, really tap in. and. Um, yeah. I have yeah. a few very specific people in mind I think would love what you're offering for sure. You know what I, I mean? Oh yeah, I um, I'll talk to you off camera. Yeah, I got uh, you. To where um, 
that would actually make you something you've never heard before. It's a title and an opp opportunity um, that you've never heard before. It's going to blow your mind. So I talked to the camera about that. I got you. I ain't going to complain about you that. Start, start bringing people to Mukani, what actually happens. So. Absolutely. All right. So that all being said, um, last opportunity. You got anything you're feeling uh, to put out there? What What's the word for the world? You know, uh, you can plug uh, something, advice, whatever you got. No, man. I think deep down inside is you know what you need to do at this point. If you're serious about your art and you feel like we have what it takes, and even if you feel like you just want to take a chance on it, the price is at that point. Mm -hmm. To where even if you don't necessarily feel like you're going to drop so a song for six months, or you don't believe in yourself right now in your music, it's still a good purchase to wear. Let me see are people rocking with my old stuff. Let me see what are they rocking with. I done gave them three different projects. So mm -hmm. I think deep down inside, it's like I leave with people to say, you know what you have to do now. Fair enough. No, I hear that. All right. Well, with that, this has been an awesome interview with, uh, should I say Ronald from Mukani or just Mukani? You can say Ronald, Mukani, DJ Snacks. Yeah, the, the whole nine yards. Yeah. This has been a wonderful uh, opportunity to speak with you. Uh, definitely a solid interview. And I hope you guys took the advice you needed. I appreciate every single one of you for showing up. Thank you for checking out Ascendance. Make sure to go check out Mukani. We will make sure to link below along with other places. Get this thing plugged for you because we want to make sure that you grow in the ways you need to. That being said, I'm Rat King. I'm Ronald Osborne. <laughs> and we will talk to you later, all right? All right.